Okay, so I'm going to share my experience. Um, and I'm going to also share my teacher's experience around certain mystical states. Uh, one of them, um, you know, at, after my white light spiritual experience, I came back into the world and it was like extreme bliss to, at such a level. It was incapacitating. So sitting on the chair until uh, the teacher just ushered me out because, you know, there, there wasn't much going to come out of my mouth. He did say the few words that came out of my mouth were like listening to an enlightened sage, but I wasn't there to remember anything. So I don't know what words I said. Anyway, um, you don't, you can't really speak much in that state. And I was shoved out the house. Um, and uh, and then it was like the most, I mean, it's extremely hard to describe the experience. It was like um, I'd walked in to the teacher's house on a dark autumn day. It was quite dull. And uh, that was what what was remembered before going in. And afterwards, it was like it was like bright summer. Everything was absolutely translucent, uh, in stunning clarity, beautiful beyond belief to the extent that one wanted to cry at the beauty. And there was nobody there. It's like, you know, there was a witnessing as possibly what was the body just walked along to the tube station. And on the tube, it was Brixton Victoria Line. Um, you know, the um, the people sitting across the um, um, uh, in the tube, I mean, they were so stunningly beautiful um, that they, there was just tears. It was just un unstoppable crying at the exquisite beauty of, uh, of the people. But then, you know, because I was new to spiritual work, uh, I did the one thing you shouldn't do, which is to identify with thoughts. And and soon the state was lost, but it was the most it was sublimely mystical, um, and uh, and then later in the day because you know it was back at work and I was, started thinking again it was completely lost those mystical states now. So if you can be in a state of um, not being a body, not being the thoughts, where everything in every moment is exquisitely beautiful, the the love the love of God is equally present in everything to such a stunning uh, uh, a stunning extent, uh, extent. I mean, it's like one could just, you know, it's just like dying and being in heaven, you know, you, you know, just to be in, you know, it's, it's bordering on extreme bliss to ecstasy. Uh, and it, it, is, it is sublime beyond, beyond description. Um, so um, from the infinite light and love where there is no world to those extreme states, but Hawkins, um, Hawkins uh, described what what you know. I was asked the question, um, you know, for, to you know, I'm not ready to give that up. If you're in a state where everything is so sublime and you're crying and everything is so beautiful and exquisite and it's like bliss and ecstasy and those high energy fields, um, I, I often share like to see if there's something even beyond that. You know, is there something even deeper and something more mystical? Now, I think. Uh, with the, I understand the question. I think Hawkins' experience is more um, more useful. So as he was doing the spiritual work, he it's described. It's in, described in one of the audio books of his, where he he where it's transcribed, um, and he and it's talked in great depth right at the back in the autobiography. So there was it now there with the spiritual work. There was extreme ecstasy. I mean, you know, almost the incapacity to have hardly any sleep extreme high ecstasy non-stop absolutely sublime and that was going on and on and on uh, endless energy and ecstasy uh, going on uh, absolutely exquisite and then um, so, but sometimes there would be the loss of the ecstasy and it would be like absolutely soul destroying that suddenly it would disappear for a period and then some spiritual work would be done and it'd be a return to the ecstasy and then again it would be lost the, the spiritual bliss and ecstasy. And then it was known that you can't just stay in ecstasy and high bliss. It's required that one goes to the next level of surrender at a certain point. At a certain, otherwise, you start losing it and starting having to fight to get it back. So it's like now it's time you have to be willing to surrender even ecstasy and high bliss for the next level. So he was then willing to give up ecstasy for an even higher higher experience 
uh, which he did. And he he said, you know, that infinite state was even more sublime than the ecstasy. And I can I can also bear my testimony that being in the infinite light beyond this world um, is um, is is a magnitude beyond ecstasy in this world. So, um, you know, and, and on a practical note, if you can enjoy ecstasy and high bliss for as long as it lasts, then, then you know, uh, I don't see any problem. Just stick around in ecstasy and high bliss for days or weeks or months on end. But if, if it, it seems to be if you start losing it, it's now time to surrender it. Be willing to surrender high bliss and ecstasy for, for the next level up and just go to the witnesser of that because it's now time, it's now required for you to go beyond that. So I do think it's okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong in just being in that. But if it's if you start losing it, maybe it's time to to surrender it and see what's even further up than, um, than those sublime states. I'll stop there.